performance of that music with recreated medieval and Baroque instruments. A key and quite remarkable figure in the promoting of early music was Melbourne socialite and arts patron Louise Hanson Dyer. In the 1930s, having relocated to Europe at the age of 43, she founded the music publishing company Edition Le Loisolier. Then in the 1940s, she founded the Loisolier recording label and made the first long playing records in Europe. Jim Davidson is a search of professor in humanities at the Victorian University of Technology, and he's just published a biography of Louise Hanson Dyer. Welcome to the program. Thank you, Peter. We'll talk about Louise and her work in a moment, but first, here's an example of the music she published. The early music group La Romanesca with La Baga Luce. And I'm talking to Jim Davidson, who's written a very exhaustive profile of Louise Hanson Dyer. When you consider that she promoted this music more than 50 years ago, it was very adventurous indeed, wasn't it? Yes, um, there had of course been rarer um, editions before that, but they had really just remained in libraries and there hadn't been anybody out publicising it. I mean, what was unique about her was that while she published her editions for libraries, she soon uh, produced general editions and then she began to record a great deal of this music and um, push it out as far as she could to as many people as possible. But the whole notion of a Melbourne woman, no matter how, uh, how confident she was about her own cultural... Uh, uh, qualifications. Going to Paris and setting up a publishing house was no, no small matter, was it? Well, that's right, because when one thinks of Gertrude Stein and those Americans, I mean, the thing that's really striking about them is that it was really just a coterie on the left bank, and there she was wrestling with the French and really conducting a, <laughs> <laughs> a publishing company in France and uh, with all that that entailed. How successful was she? Extremely so, I think, um, in that uh, she uh, was a most effective publicist for the music she, she, she uh, promoted. Uh, she, was, uh, she almost single-handedly revived uh, Francois Couperin, who's now accepted as one of the great Western composers. Many, much of the music that she published of his had never been published before, not even in, in his own day. Mm. Uh, and then she became interested in, in even earlier music, going right back to the 14th century and even the 13th century. She, she, she was one of those people who went to the, uh, from the New World to Europe and became fascinated by origins, often in a way that the Europeans themselves had almost forgotten. And she brought with her a robustness, of course. That's right, a, a kind of New World, Edna Average vitality. <laughs> when you consider that, I mean, I introduced her as a socialite, and that has a slightly pejorative uh, edge to it. That's how but she started. She, yeah, mm. but she had a lot more going oh, on that's than right. just well, I mean, after socialising. All, that's right. I mean, after all, she could have just sat in her Tuffet and Turak serving tea to friends, but mm. she actually used her money to create a career for herself as a music publisher and to publish the music she believed in and to accept the advice of leading musicologists and performers so that important music which up till then would never have been touched by other publishing houses or other recording companies was made available. So she was determined to make her mark wasn't she? Absolutely, seems mm. to have been, yes, mm. absolutely. Tell me about Louise Hanson Dyer, the Hanson Dyer collection. Uh, well it's basically, her, she was actually born with the wonderful name of Louise Smith and so, so, so it's rather nice that she's ended up with a double-barrel name which of course obscures that beautifully. 
basically, um, of course, I, um, she had two husbands, and the 